Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this service of morning prayer found in your Book of Common Prayer. We will begin on page 79. If you're joining us via the chat, um, you will uh, on Zoom. Um, I'm posting right now a link to the bulletin. You'll also find a link to the bulletin on the Facebook uh, live stream uh, description key. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquities of us all. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us read together uh, the Vanity found in your prayer book on page 724. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness at Meribah and on that day at Massa when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long, I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We will read together um, the psalm, psalm number 55. We'll read it intentionally by whole verse. It can be found in your prayer book on page 660. Lord, hear my, hear my prayer, O God, and do not hide your face from my petition. Listen to me and answer me. I have no peace because of my cares. I am shaken by the noise of my enemy and by the pressure of the wicked. They have cast an evil spell upon me and are set against me in fury. My heart quakes within me and terror, the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling have come over me and horror overwhelms me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee to a far off place and make my lodging in the wilderness. I would hasten to escape from the stormy wind and tempest. Swallow them up, O Lord, confound their speech, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night the watchmen make their rounds upon her walls, but trouble and misery are in the midst of her. There is corruption at her heart. Her streets are never free of oppression and deceit. 
or had it been an adversary who turned me, who tortured me, and then I could have borne it. Or had it been an enemy who vaunted himself against me, then I could have hidden from him. But it was you, a man after my own heart, my companion, my own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together and walked with the throne in the house of God. Let death come upon them suddenly. Let them go down alive into the grave. For wickedness is in their dwellings, in their very midst. But I will call upon God, and the Lord will deliver me. In the evening, in the morning, and at noonday, I will complain and lament, and he will hear my voice. He will bring me safely back from the battle waged against me. For there are many who fight against me. God, who is enthroned of old, will hear me and bring them down. They never change. They do not fear God. My companion stretched forth his hand against his comrade and broke his covenant. Speech is softer than butter, but war is in his heart. His words are smoother than oil but they are drawn swords. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous stumble. For you will bring the bloodthirsty and deceitful down to the pit of destruction, O God. They shall not live out half their days, but I will put my trust in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. How the Lord in his anger has humiliated daughter Zion. He has thrown down from heaven to earth the splendor of Israel. He has not remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. The Lord has destroyed without mercy all the dwellings of Jacob. In his wrath, he has spoken down, broken down the strongholds of daughter Judah. He has brought down to the ground in dishonor the kingdom and its rulers. He has cut down in fierce anger all the might of Israel. He has withdrawn his right hand from them in the face of the enemy. He has burned like a flaming fire in Jacob, consuming all around. He has bent his bow like an enemy with his right hand set like a foe. He has killed all in whom he took pride in the tent of daughter Zion. He has poured out his fury like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has destroyed Israel. He has destroyed all its palaces, laid in ruins its strongholds, and multiplied in daughter Judah mourning and lamentation. He has broken down his booth like a garden. He has destroyed his tabernacle. The Lord has ab abolished in Zion festival and Sabbath, and in his fierce indignation has spurned king and priest. The Lord has scorned his altar, disowned his sanctuary. He has delivered into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. A clamor was raised in the house of the Lord as on a day of festival. The Lord determined to lay in ruins the wall of daughter Zion. He stretched the line. He did not withhold his hand from the ground. He was ruining and he has ruined and broken her bars. Her king and princes are among the nations. Guidance is no more and her prophets obtain no vision from the Lord. Here ends the reading. The canticle. Let us read together the canticle, canticle number 14, found in your Book of Common Prayer on page 90. We'll read it antiphonally by whole verse. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. 
All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, O Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sins and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. But I call on God as witness against me. It was to spare you that I did come, did not come again to Corinth. I do not mean to imply that we lord it over your faith. Rather, we are workers with you for your joy, because you stand firm in the faith. So I made up my mind not to make you another painful visit. For if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came, I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. For I am confident about all of you, that my joy would be the joy of all of you. For I wrote you out of much distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. But if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but to some extent, not to exaggerate it, to all of you. This punishment by the majority is enough for such a person. So now, instead, you should forgive and console him so that he may not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote for this reason, to test you, to know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has not been for your sake in the presence of Christ has been for the sake, your sake, in the presence of Christ. And we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. Here ends the reading. Let us read together antiphonally. Canticle number 16, found on page 92 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemy, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemy. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray in the prayer our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the suffering of this present time, confident of the great glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you ministered to all who came to you. Look with compassion upon all who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore them to the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove from them the fear that besets them. Strengthen them in the work of their recovery and to those who care for them. Give patience and understanding and a pursuing love. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray in this time, especially for the aged. for healthcare workers, we pray for our nation and its leaders and for the leaders of the nations of the world that they might be guided to right actions for the welfare of God's people. We pray for those who mourn and for those who have died. We pray for all first responders. We give thanks for the sound of birds singing. We give thanks for the warmth of the sun We give thanks for the gift of family and friends and community, for technology that allows us to gather in love.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. God's peace. Bye-bye now.